Well, g'day everyone. Today, we've actually got the 70 to 180 Tamron lens that we're gonna have a look at. I'm really excited to have a look at this lens. So over the next few shoots, what I'm actually gonna do is probably, uh, I'll have to use Kerry due to the fact that we're all in lockdown at the moment. Uh, so I don't wanna use a, uh, a normal model that I use. So Kerry has so uh, generously decided that she'd model for me. She's not gonna like it. Pop over Kerry for a minute. Um, so Kerry's gonna model for me today. Um, so we're gonna to work together and I'm just gonna do a few uh, little tests on here where we're gonna look at how it focuses, for instance, uh, and I'll probably use the A7 III and the A9 um, for that. We'll, and then we'll do some photos around the area that I live just so you can have a look at uh, how this actually works. Now I've only got this lens for around about two days because it's gotta be passed to, to some other YouTubers or other photographers that wanna try this lens out. So. I am gonna be uh, a little bit sort of lacking in what I can show you at this stage, but obviously in the coming weeks, I'll get a, a longer term loan of one of these where I'll be able to uh, test it extensively. So I'm really looking forward uh, to actually doing that. Um, we will go into the studio and have a look and we can compare this say to the uh, 70 to 200 F4. So we can have a look at that to see how that compares in size and, and I'll feel the difference in the weight and things like that. Uh, and then what I might do too is just take a shot with the 70 to 200 uh, as well as this and we'll have a look at the difference of how these look. Now I've got the 70 to 200 F4 so it's not the G Master but I'll talk about that from another review that's just been posted. Uh, but I'll definitely review this against the F4 version uh, and we can have a look at uh, some of those images. So let's start. Uh, we'll have a look and I'll show you how this focuses and we'll have a look at Kerry uh, being shot uh, in, with this in the background. So let's do that now. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, um, I'm using the A7 III at this stage to uh, photograph Kerry, uh, and I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to do a couple of still poses, and then I'm going to get her to walk and things like that. And I'll also show, using the A7 III as well, uh, how the tracking is. But at this stage, I'm using the A7 III to uh, capture stills, and I'm using the A9 uh, to do the video. So what I'll do is now, I'm just going to do a couple of photos of Kerry, and I'll show you how this all works uh, soon because I'll show you how it's focusing and stuff like that um, through the camera with the lens on. Uh, so I'm shooting at 200, uh, 180 mil here just to see how it looks. Uh, now Kerry, can you now do me a favour and start walking towards me? That's it. Look out towards the sun a little bit. That's it. Beautiful. So I'm checking to see how the focus goes. It looks like it's great. Um, so stay there Kerry. I'm going to pop in and Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the 180 mil. So I want to push it right out to 180 and separate Kerry from that background a little bit. Um, so let's have a look. The eye detection's working really well. It's beautiful in fact. And then you'll be able to check how the bokeh and rendering looks. Beautiful Kerry. Lovely. Kerry's really having a good time here. I think she's loving it. <laughs> so this is the 180. Now I'm going to see how close I can come in because I think it can get very, very close. And that back. So I'm trying to get now really close in. Uh, and then I'm going to try some macro stuff uh, a little bit later. Push your face a little bit, yeah, like that. Bring your face a little bit back to me. That's it, stay like that. Look up towards the sun a little bit more though. That's it. Beautiful. Okay, so we might do some walking stuff now. All right, so what I want to do now is test how this is with Kerry walking towards me. Um, so I'm on seven, uh, again, I'm on the 180 to start with, um, and I'm going to go to f2.8 and have a look at what these look like. Now I'm on to one two hundredth of a second, and I'm on ISO 500. It's very dark today, um, so I want to make sure that I get enough. Okay, Kerry, just start walking. Beautiful. Okay, go back again. Okay, stop there. All right, just start walking again. Look over towards the light. Beautiful. Keep going. Look over there towards the light. Really pretty, okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I've put the uh, 70 to 180 Tamron lens on my A9 now, so you're gonna be able to see it coming through here. And you'll notice if I push on there that it starts to show the focus uh, working. Now I'm on one two hundredth of a second. I want to keep the uh, shutter speed up a little bit, but it's very, very dull at the moment, very dull. So I'm on ISO 400, uh, but I'm shooting at 2.8. Um, now if I move this in um, to 
200 mil or 180 mil. Let me just adjust this so we can see Kerry. Kerry, can you just take your glasses off just for a second? I'm just going to see if it'll get her eye. Yeah, it does. So there you go. Now move quickly to your left and right. So quickly, quicker though, if you can. Now it's grabbed her face. You can see there that it's actually go, uh, grabbing her eye from that distance. So it's a fair way away. So it looks like it's focusing very, very well. All right, All right stop there. Now what I might do is just get Kerry to walk towards me and I'll show you how it keeps track of her walking towards me. Okay, so go Kerry. Walk reasonably fast. That's it, look, at, look over the way as well. Okay, go back. All right, so you can see there it was working very, very well. Um, Kerry, stop there. Now, what I'm gonna get you to do now is try and run quickly towards me. Are right, you ready? So just start walking towards me fairly fast, go. Okay, lovely. All right, go back. All right, come, come this way though, Kez, if you can. Come this way. Keep coming. Keep coming. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'll stick it onto video and we're gonna see how long this takes to focus back on Kerry. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna test this to see how it focuses between Kerry and the background. So I'm not pressing anything, but you can see it's just using face detect to grab Kerry here. So Kerry, can you run out to the side? I'll just wait for it to get the background, which it did. Okay, come back into the middle. You can see there it's locked back on. Go to the other side, lock back in, come back into the middle. All right, now go down if you can. Wait a minute, up now. All right, now just move to you a little bit there, a little bit to your right. That's perfect, so it's looking like it's working very, very well. All right, so what we're gonna do now is it's gonna follow Kerry. So you'll see at the moment, it's just grabbing Kerry. Now turn around, start coming back. You'll see it'll grab her face immediately. She turns uh, around like that. Just turn back and face the other way again, Kerry. Again, it's just grabbing the whole of Kerry. Now turn around again. Now just start walking towards me. Um, you'll see that this should be able to track Kerry coming all the way in. Uh, I might have to move the tripod though. Okay, go. Look up there. That's it. Look back towards me. Beautiful. Okay, so now that we've done that shoot and I've added a few other places as well, uh, we'll go back to the studio and we can have a look uh, what the images look like um, because I'm really curious and it's hard to tell on the back of uh, the actual screen. Um, so thanks Kerry so much for helping me out uh, doing that, uh, even though she hated doing it. Uh, and we'll go back to the studio now and check out the images. Okay, so let's just see if the 180 in the Tamron is the same as the 180 in the uh, Sony G uh, lens, the 70 to 200. So what I've done here is I've shot the two images and you can see here that this one is the Tamron, the 70 to 180. Uh, I shot them both at f4 because they're uh, the G uh, Sony lens is an f4 lens uh, and I've used the same exposure, 180th of a second, it was on a tripod. Uh, and I've, uh, it's f4 and it's at 180 millimeter. So this one here is the Tamron lens. Uh, this one here is the Sony uh, lens. Now you will notice that there is a little bit of a difference in um, uh, exposure. So the, the Tamron is definitely letting a little bit more light in. So now what I've done is I've taken them into um, Photoshop and I've put them over the top of one another to see if they are exactly the same. So. If we go to Photoshop here, so I've stuck them on uh, each layer, and then if I switch them off, you'll see that the lighter one here is the Tamron, and the darker one is the um, G uh, Sony lens. But it looks to me like the Tamron is, th which is this one, is just slightly larger than what the Sony lens is at 180 millimeter. Um, so I just thought I might share that in case if you're wondering whether it is uh, showing a true 180 or not. Uh, I'm not uh, exactly sure how scientific this is, but I just, just wanted to show you that both lenses are basically the same at 180. In fact, the Tamron is a little bit um, larger than what the uh, Sony lens is, and it's definitely letting in more light at the same exposure. Okay, so let's look now at how close these lenses can focus. So again, we're concentrating on the Sony 70 to 200G f4 lens against the Tamron 70 to 180 uh, f2.8. 
2.8 lens. So uh, I'll just switch over here and you'll have a look what's happened here. So what I've done is I've focused at the minimum distance. So in other words, this was as close as I could get uh, where it could obtain focus. Uh, now this is at 70 mil, um, so I'm gonna shoot both at the same settings at f4. Uh, it's at 1 25th of a second at f4. Uh, there's 70 mil here that I've done, and it's showing that it's the 70 to 200. Now if we look at uh, the Tamron lens, so that's how close, if I click on the Tamron lens, you'll see how much closer that's actually got. Again, it's 1 25th at f4, but it's got way closer than what the Sony lens could. I'll bring both lenses up together, uh, and we'll have a look then and you'll be able to see the difference between the two. Uh, so how close you can get with these two lenses are, are drastically different. Uh, are different. You can see here that you know the, the fruit itself is not that large as compared to the one on the right hand side. So this is at 70 mil. So let's now look at uh, zooming into the 180 mil. Um, so let me come back to here. So this is the 70 to 200. Again, I'm shooting at the same settings again. This is as close as I could get with the two uh, the 200 mil at 180. I didn't want to do it at 200 because I wanted them to match. Um, so this is that. And if we look at the Tamron lens next to it, uh, I'll bring them both up. Uh, you can see here again how much closer you can get with the Tamron lens as compared to using the Sony lens. So if you did want to do you know, sort of makeshift macro or get very close to your subject, you've got much more working ability with the Tamron lens uh, than what you've got with the Sony uh, 70 to 200 uh, G. Uh, and the uh, G Master, you can get slightly closer, but they're very, very close with what you can get with the um, 70 to 200 G. So the Tamron is way better in, in getting close to your uh, subject. So what I'll do now is I'll also show you how it looks with macro sort of blowing the background out. Um, so I've done a couple of images here uh, that you can look at. This is uh, shooting at f2.8. Uh, you can see it's lovely and sharp if we look inside here. Uh, just looking at the detail, the background is really lovely and smooth. Uh, if you're looking through there, um, focus work really, really well. It just shows how much detail you can see. You can see all the veins and stuff inside the um, the flower there as well. Uh, so this is at f2.8. Um, uh, another one I just wanted to try was at um, f5.6. Um, so you can see this one here at 5.6 if you wanted to sort of see what detail you would get at f5.6. Uh, there is much more detail sort of rendered now and everything as well. It's very, very sharp this lens, very, very sharp. You know, it looks like there's just no chromatic aberrations around the outside or anything. So it looks like it's really good uh, in that regard. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. Uh, the background obviously now is uh, showing more than at the 2.8 due to the fact of the opening up the aperture. I suppose this is one advantage with going to 2.8 if you really wanted to blow the background out and you get a very nice smooth looking background there uh, as well. So what we'll look at now is uh, fringing and chromatic aberration. So I've taken these couple of different shots uh, here. Um, so this one was shot uh, at 180 millimeter. Um, it is one two thousandth of a second and it's at 5.6. Uh, and I just wanted to give you a look um, to see the edges, uh, to see how sharp it actually is. I can't see any fringing at 5.6 um, at all. Uh, it looks really sharp actually, there's nothing there to see uh, at all. No chromatic aberrations, no fringing. Um, let's look at another one. Uh, we'll go down and see if I've done one at 2.8. I did, so this is 2.8. Uh, we can have a look at this too. It looks really sharp if you look around the edges through here. I'm not seeing any red or blue fringing or anything like that at all. Uh, it looks really, really sharp. In fact, you can even see a bug that's sitting up there. Um, a very, very uh, nice, sharp lens that looks very, very clean. Okay, so let's look at the detail that you can get from this, uh, these images uh, without any sharpening put in at all. And then we'll have a look at um, if there's any barrel distortion uh, through this. I normally don't photograph walls, so I thought I'd show you that just for a change. Um, so here's the image uh, that I took. And you can see there is a very small amount of barrel distortion on this, but it's only really uh, minor. Uh, now this is shot at 2.8. Um, but I thought, and it's also shot at 70 mil. So if we zoom in, I thought I'd show you the detail that you can get from this um, is, is quite uh, good uh, at 2.8, but when we switch to uh, f5.6, the detail is astounding actually. Um, so I'll switch to 5.6, 
and this will give you an idea now about the detail we're receiving. The barrel distortion has improved a little bit as well uh, that we're looking at through here, but if we look at the detail now through this image, uh, it really is uh, incredibly detailed and it's detailed right the way across. Um, there doesn't seem to be much loss at all on the edges. It is slightly sharper in the center, uh, of course, but the edges are holding out really well. So it looks like it's a very, very strong lens. Uh, I'll just check that on the 2.8 as well. We can have a look at the edges just to see what's happening at the edges. The 2.8 is definitely a fraction softer uh, than what the 5.6 is, uh, but still incredible if you think no sharpening has been added. Like I said, the 5.6 is outstanding if you're looking at the detail uh, that's in there. So let's see how it went with Kerry running, uh, because I wanted to test the focus. Uh, now, I couldn't use the A9 in this regard because I was using that for video at the time, uh, so I used the A7 III, but it was still shooting at 10 frames per second. Now, it was quite challenging light. Uh, if you look here, the uh, exposure was 1 400th. I wanted to do it fast enough so it would stop Kerry, so there was no uh, motion blur. Uh, in the images, I was using 2.8, and it was ISO 1600. Um, so it was... Um, really, really quite dull. Uh, so let's look at how it went if I start scrolling through these images. I might blow this up a little bit so that you can see how it looks uh, with the images a little bit larger. Okay, so we'll scroll through them and just have a look. Um, so Kerry ran fairly fast actually, so I'm gonna scroll through these pretty quick. Uh, and you'll see that it grabs focus all the time. It was locked on her face uh, and she's running quite quick. And the focus has basically not missed a single shot. Uh, that may be a fraction soft, uh, that's nice and sharp, that's nice and sharp, that's nice and sharp, sharp again, um, sharp again, really sharp, uh, really sharp, 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 sharp. And I'm moving the camera at this time as well to keep Kerry in focus uh, as well as she's running. And you can see that basically it's grabbed every single one, apart from two, I think, out of th th that whole range of exposure were a fraction soft. And even those uh, were quite usable. So I, I think overall, um, the focus on this lens is absolutely outstanding. So let's look now at how the crop will affect you or, or if the difference of that 20 mil will make much difference to your work. And the easiest way to show you that is, uh, I, what I did was I used both lenses. I used the 70 to 200 f4 and the Tamron 70 to 180 and I put them on a tripod so it's exactly the same for each shot. Now if we look down here, this will give you exactly the type of um, cropping that you're going to see, the difference between the cropping. Now you'll notice on the left hand side here is the Tamron, on the right hand side is the 70 to 200. Uh, so you can see here that with the Tamron you have got more of the sign that's on the left hand side and you can see where the tree, you've got more gap showing through here. So this one obviously has gone in the extra 20 mil. Now it works out to about 10% uh, if you're looking at that. But this will give you a perfect example about what that difference will be between the 70, uh, the 200 mil uh, to the 180 on this side. And I think that's the easiest way to show this is to show you what you would be missing. For me personally, it's not an issue at all. Uh, I mean, if I had to, I could crop in a little bit. Uh, it's not really that much when you look that you're only losing that amount on either side. But if that is critical to you, uh, well then obviously you would need to get the 200 mil lens. Now what I thought I'd do here is just give a different type of sharpness test uh, with the 70 to 200 mil Sony lens against the Tamron 70 to 180. Uh, and I had it on a tripod and I tried to focus on a similar area uh, in the tree just to sort of see what detail I'd get. Now let me just bring it over here. Now this is the um, A9 uh, with the 70 to 200 f4. Uh, and I did shoot this at 200 mil because I wanted to get an idea of, of how sharp this would be at maximum um, uh, length, which was the 200 mil. Now you can see here that this is all in focus and you can see the area there that's uh, sharp. Now this is a good representation, I believe, because I've used this lens for so long about how this will look um, at the 200 mil. Uh, it's not perfectly sharp and it never is. Uh, the GM lens uh, would be better uh, in that regard, but I thought, I haven't got the GM, so I thought I'd take this directly against the 70 to 200 f4. Uh, now both shots are going to be at f4 because I did want to match apertures. Um, so that's the 70 to 200. Now if we look at the 70 to 180 at 180, you can see here how much sharper 
the uh, Tamron lens is. I mean, it, it is a drastic difference uh, in sharpness that, that you can see that, uh, you know, all the detail in the leaf through here. Now, this is a, a fair enlargement that I'm showing you here, um, but the enlargement is quite drastic if you're looking at it. And you can even see here where it's very, very sharp through the branch through here. So anything that is in perfect focus is way sharper than the 70 to 200 at 200 mil. Okay, so let's have a look at a few images uh, and you can have a feel about how the lens works. Um, so I've photographed Kerry and, and some buildings and things like that uh, all around the town uh, and it'll give you an idea about how this works at different focal lengths, etc. Uh, so we'll have a look at those images now. strength and show me your weakness we're in this together now we're in this together now give me your love and tell me your secrets cause we're in this together now yeah we're in this together now Falling down, even if we're falling down. All of me is yours, every part of me. Cause we're in this together now. You and me together now. What's the point of living if we're scared to lose each other? those images down below. I think overall, to summarize how this lens is, I absolutely love this. And in fact, I'm going to sell my 70 to 200 uh, F4 um, Sony lens for this lens because I think that there's really not much that can beat this out there. Well, I don't think there's anything that can beat there in this focal range. Um, yes, you do lose a little bit at the 20 mil end, but I've showed that that really isn't much at all. And to be honest, that uh, losing that 20 mil, which is about 10%, doesn't bother me at all. Um, I love the feel of this lens. I know the build quality is amazing on these lenses because I've been using the uh, 28 to 75 for so long and it still looks as good as the day I've got it. Not having IBIS is not a problem for me at all um, because these cameras that I use have internal IBIS uh, in them, so you've got three axis anyway. So I found that uh, for me it worked perfectly and the results that I took prove that. Um, the focus, the autofocus is outstanding. It's it's really up with the best that I've used on a Sony lens. It really is amazing. And I can't wait to say, uh, use something like this on a wedding or in a wedding or something like that, or even dance shoots when I get this later on. Um, I do have to send this back. So thank you so much for Tamron for sending me this lens. Uh, if you have any questions about this at all, uh, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And apart from that, guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.